This is the Retirement Key Podcast with Abe Abish, founder of Abish Financial Services. And I'm Heather Branch here with Abe asking for his insight on what you can be working on now as you get closer to your retirement goal. You want to make sure you've got your money all sorted out as well. And that's what Abe and his team and Abish Financial Services are here to help you with. The retirementkey.com is where you can start the conversation with Abe and his team. We also have links posted in the show notes. Or again, find us anytime at theretirementkey.com. We are officially into September. So it is that time of year. I do it every single year, Abe. It is that time for me to remind you and all the men of Northern Virginia, do not forget that Christmas is just around the corner. You need Man, to start shopping for Christmas. No, this is for your wife, Shelly, and all the wives. Run North- <laughs> do not forget to start shopping for your Christmas Thank present. Thank you for that reminder. Right. Thank no, I'm here reminder. for you because I will never That's forget. Right. Yeah. I think it was the first year you and I were doing radio together and you were saying to me how you ordered her gift too late and had to like wrap up a picture of something. Or tell her that, uh, you know, the mail was delayed. UPS, FedEx was delayed. Lied when? to your wife. <laughs> Lied to uh, her on Christmas. To be here. It'll be here soon. Danger. No, it's definitely not the same as having it on Christmas Day or the uh-huh. birthday uh-huh. and being able to open it up physically. So, I've learned those lessons. Public service yeah. announcement yeah. to you and, and yeah. all the husbands. I also used to just wrap the Amazon box. Like I wouldn't even take the thing out of the Amazon box. I would just wrap the Amazon box instead of taking the gift out of the Amazon box. Well, and sometimes, okay, called, that I can get on board with because sometimes if it's yeah. like a weird shape, you, yeah. there's only so much She called me out on that too. Okay. So yeah, the right. gifting skill, the wrapping skills there is, have there's, improved, <laughs> have improved. And now she's impressed. Okay, See? good. See? Yeah, we just need patience, just ladies. Things. We just need some patience. It's a little We things. try, we try. That's it. All right, well, keep in mind your time frame. It's that time of year. Start thinking ahead. I'm here to help Thank you. you. Uh, let's continue the conversation about husbands and wives because sure. in the work that you do, it's a very important conversation that both spouses are involved when it comes to this financial and retirement plan. Absolutely. As we know, women tend to outlive men. However... It seems that men still to this day manage a lot of the financial planning and Mm -hmm. retirement planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, research does show that nearly 80% of women will become the sole financial decision maker for their household. And that includes planning for their retirement as well. So what I want to talk to you about is how you prioritize all the ladies at Abish Financial Services and how the work you do there, how you work to ensure that both spouses are on the same page when it comes to creating a plan. Wow, just so important. So important, Mm -hmm. Heather. I mean, Mm -hmm. well, really, it's very ideal to have both spouses come in together, right? Um, Even if you have a spouse who kind of takes the backseat with the finances and Typically, it's one spouse that kind of leads the way. You know, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll use Shelly and I as an example. Mm -hmm. Here at the firm, although we run the firm together, we have very different roles. And, um, you know, I'll kind of take over and, you know, know all the ins and outs of what's going on here at the office inside the company. And Mm -hmm. um, But she pretty much knows all the ins and outs of the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, this is kind of my my thing here. And then although she's a huge help and a huge part of Abish Financial uh, internally, we do very different things. But man, she she knows everything with the house. And I kind of follow her lead um, a lot there at the house just Mm -hmm. because, you know, if I was running the house, I don't think it'd be the way (laughs) the way Shelly has it, you know, and so so I kind of take the backseat there. And, you know, there's usually one spouse that does take the backseat with the finances and one leads away. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, both spouses are pretty much on the same page. Mm -hmm. But I would say more often than not, it's one spouse leading the way that's made a lot of the financial decisions, that does a lot of the investing, a lot mm-hmm. of the investment choice picking, buying insurance, you know, all these things. And there's kind of one spouse that follows. Well, while that might work out fine leading up to retirement, if one spouse has been out of the picture for a long time, typically it's at this point when a family is phasing out of their working career and transitioning into retirement that mm-hmm. it is crucial to have both spouses, partners involved as much as possible when all these decisions are being made because you've got social security decisions, you've got pension decisions, all these decisions impact each other. Yep. Maybe not right now. Uh, Some of them will affect you right now, but certainly down the road as one passes away, surviving spouses left behind, Mm -hmm. pension decisions, social security decisions, lump sum decisions, 
distribution decisions, you know, how much money to pull out of the accounts and which accounts, yeah. all of this impacts the surviving spouse. I mean, this is one big reason why we try to tap into Roth IRAs last for okay. most people because okay. Roth IRAs are totally free of taxation, right. you know, um, and taxes have been paid on those accounts. They're probably going to be the most valuable to people when you mm -hmm. pass on. Mm -hmm. So we just really encourage both spouses and partners to come in and we kind of frown upon just one spouse coming in because then that spouse has to go home, relay all the information to the other spouse. And it's nothing it's a, like sitting across from the conference room table yeah. with both people right there, you know, yeah. Heather. And so, um, so we just really encourage that, especially for a situation where one spouse has led the way, which is so common. And oftentimes, not always, but a lot of times it's the men leading those financial decisions and the, the wife kind of just trusts that everything's going fine. And usually it does go fine. But then I think a lot of the husbands start realizing, well, if I've been the one making the decisions for the most part, in large degree, up until now, and I continue to do so, and something mm -hmm. happens to me at 75, 80, 85, mm -hmm. well, my wife it's going to be really out of the loop here and what's right. going on. And I don't want that to happen. And neither does the spouse. Right. So, uh, you know, a family that's really on top of these things, they get in here, they get in here so they can hear all the options available to them and make decisions together. Okay. That is the best. And yep. so that's what we encourage. And so we have couples all the time like this that come in. Sometimes a husband will flat out tell me, Abe, I'm, I'm here because I want to make sure my wife is taken care of, which is fantastic. But it's because usually the husband's been leading the way with all the decisions mm -hmm. up until this point. Mm -hmm. So we just had a couple come in from Haymarket, and this is the case again. Uh, the gentleman is working for a huge uh, engineering firm here in the Northern Virginia area. The wife is staying at home. She finished her career a while ago, and a, a large part of her career was raising the kids at home, you know, which is mm -hmm. so true of many women. And so they have three million bucks saved. Nice. They, they live in Haymarket. Yeah. They're retiring down south. Uh, they've got a little bit of an age gap, which also presents some different scenarios for them. He's 60, she's 65. He's retiring within a year. Okay. And they've won the game financially to have more than enough money that, you know, can generate right there. Well over a hundred thousand dollars a year in portfolio income on top of the rental income, social security checks. Mm -hmm. They've won the game. Now the concern is transitioning successfully over into retirement phase two mm -hmm. and making sure the wife is up to speed on all these decisions that the husband had been making up until this point. Sure. And another big reason why so many people come in and become clients of ours, Heather, is because of this whole phase one, phase two deal. Like everyone knows how to grow their money and accumulate it and save it and get the match. And everyone knows how to do it, especially when the markets are flying high, mm -hmm. right? Markets get volatile. You start getting closer to phase two, to transitioning into full-time retirement. All these decisions come down the pike that you never had before. And while you can Google certain things, yeah. you can't get an answer from Google on everything about your situation, right? right? I mean, right. if you Google when to take Social Security, there's probably millions of opinions out there on when to take it, yep. right? Yep. But it all comes down to your own personal situation. So what we did is we went through a comprehensive where do I stand plan for this couple, especially mm -hmm. for the wife. That's what a lot of spouses need is that confidence to know, okay, if you're going to continue to run with these decisions, I want to be on, more on page. And I want the confidence to know that a financial professional has tested this math yeah. and they've given their approval that it's okay for you to stop working and for us to make sure that we can survive on this money the next 30 to 40 years of our lives. Yep. And that's the type of approval and added confidence that a fiduciary retirement planner, a phase two fiduciary retirement planner can offer a couple transitioning into retirement. That comprehensive where do I stand plan, which just goes through all these decisions, not just the investments, the insurances, the social security decisions, the pension decisions, the estate plan mm -hmm. puts together in a comprehensive plan so that for the first time in many people's lives, they have a retirement roadmap that's all done and a where do I stand plan. So if you sound like this couple from Haymarket, Virginia, uh, and you say, you know what, Abe, we haven't been on the same page with our finances for a long time. I know some, but we really need to be uh, more on the same page as we transition into retirement so we can make good educated decisions together. Yeah. Go to our website, theretirementkey.com. Click on the contact us tab at the top of the page, and we can begin to have these same conversations with you about your retirement as well. We also have links posted in the show notes, so you can just click there or, again, find us anytime at theretirementkey.com. All right, we've been talking about end-of-year things. Something else that a lot of people ask about when it gets to Q4 is the idea of tax loss harvesting, usually closer sure. to the end of the year. But an article right. that I was reading was talking about the tax strategy becoming more popular year-round 
given the volatility in the stock market. So can you give us a primer on this, explain how it works and how often you do it for clients and what we need to be considering now and all year for 2020. Gosh, I can't believe I say it, 2025. (laughs) Yeah, so end of the year is the common time, Heather, but you're right. I mean, with markets being at all-time highs, you know, it's a good thing to probably look at this a couple times a year. And for our clients, we offer quarterly reviews. Yep. And most of our clients take us up on that, you know, meeting four times a year. And our clients have found that by meeting four times a year, we can really stay on top of things, especially in a big year like an election year. Right. You have inflation going on, the election coming up here. You've got a couple wars going on. I mean, anything can burst at any time. Mm -hmm. But tax loss harvesting, common investment strategy, typically in a brokerage account, non-IRA account Mm -hmm. that allows investors to offset capital gains with capital losses during a year. So let's say, let's just pick Apple, right? Let's say you've done phenomenally on Apple and you're up $100,000. You've got, you you made $100,000 in gain on Apple stock. Mm -hmm. Well, Maybe there's $100,000 in losses in the same account, right? Maybe you struck out on NVIDIA and Tesla and who I'm just, just throwing random right. examples. Whatever out. it might be. Mm-hmm. The case, right? But you've also lost $100,000 on okay. three or four stocks you picked that didn't do so well. Yeah. You could offset those two. And if you have 100000 of gains or whatever the amount is and 100000 of losses, well, you really have no gain, right? And you hmm. could sell all those positions, sell the winners, sell the losers and replace them with better performing runs, right? And so in that specific case, there'd be no gain because the gains off the losses offset the gains. And so that doesn't happen, you know, all the time. But right. you want to look for those opportunities throughout the year and take advantage of them in that calendar year. Because it might and, not be an even offset, but it could be something to at least reduce the absolutely. tax burden. Yeah, absolutely. And with the markets hitting all time highs, what we're seeing is that these gains can get larger and larger really quickly. And we want to keep an eye on those, Got right? It. So yeah. that, I mean, look at what Warren Buffett did just about a month ago. Mm-hmm. They actually sold Berkshire Hathaway half of their Apple position because right. that Apple position at the time was two times larger than all of their other individual positions, meaning they had crushed it with their Apple stock. Yep. And Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway said, you know what? We need to reduce the gains here, take some chips off the table, Well, if a billionaire and these monster investor firms and investment firms out there are doing this, don't you think we should as middle Americans? Of course we should. At least that's a perfect time to be locking in some gains, taking chips off the table. And so we just helped a gentleman do this. I mean, this happens all the time, but this specific gentleman came in from Stafford with a million and a half dollars, about a half a million of that in a brokerage account and a million in the TSP. Mm -hmm. Well, in the brokerage account, he had all these technology stocks, right? Like Microsoft, Apple, Google, Tesla, NVIDIA. And he had done really well um, in them over the years. Mm -hmm. And what we did was just that for him. We got rid of some winners by offsetting some of the losers. There were some losers in there. And oftentimes what we'll do, Heather, is we'll split that tax bill up. If there is a tax bill, sometimes up over multiple calendar years, right? Okay. If there's hundreds of thousands of dollars of gain in a brokerage account, Mm -hmm. it may not uh, make sense to sell everything at once, but perhaps to split those gains up um, over maybe a couple different calendar years. Okay. Lots of options, but the point is now might be one of the best times in a long time to take a look at what you have, take a look at how well you've done. Mm -hmm. Your account values are probably higher than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. The markets are higher than they've ever been, which means both are true. You've done really well. It might be a great time to take some chips off the table. How would you know without doing a portfolio x-ray? How right. would you know without getting a complimentary second opinion and a second look at everything you've done? Right. So if you sound like this gentleman from Stafford, Virginia, and you say, you know what, Abe, I've done really well on my accounts as well. I've got a lot of gains in there. I'd like someone to take a look at them. Just make sure this is the right portfolio for me heading mm-hmm. into retirement. Mm-hmm. Then go to our website, theretirementkey.com. Click on the contact us tab at the top of the page. We can begin to have these same conversations about your portfolio as well. We also have links posted in the show notes. If it's more convenient, you can just click there or again, find us anytime. Theretirementkey.com. Thanks for listening to the Retirement Key Podcast with Abe Abish. To learn more about Abish Financial Services, visit retirementkeyradio.com and join Abe for his radio show, The Retirement Key, Saturdays at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. and Sundays at 8 a.m., 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. 
Investment advisory services offered through Abish Financial Wealth Management, LLC, number 310633, a registered investment advisor firm. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Abraham Abish is licensed in your state, please call 571-577-9968. Abish Financial Services is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Abish Financial Services, Inc., Virginia Insurance License, number 127820. 